What's up YouTube, Kelvin here. Today's video we're going to look at upgrading an ICE standalone version 2.3 to the latest version of ICE which is 2.4. This is my topology that I'm using, this simulates the internet, the cloud here. And then I've got my workstation management PC that I'll be using. It's connected, the network is connected to a domain controller, Active, Di Active Directory domain controller, and I have currently a standalone virtual ICE 2.3 appliance, all connected to the same network. So we'll jump into the machine, and there's just a few things before we get started with the upgrade process there's just a few things to note for those that are actually following along I've pulled up the upgrade guide here for 2.3 similar to any versions 2.0 all the way up to 2.3 if you upgrade into 2.4 it's a similar process um, in that it's a single it's a single upgrade path um, so you don't have to upgrade to different versions before you get to 2.4 that is of course if you are using any version um, of ice from 2.0 to 2.3 um, as it says here to up to 2.2 and obviously 2.3 which is what we've got here um, you do need valid credentials to download the Cisco software, as you're probably aware. Um, the bundle is ICE Upgrade Bundle. It's, it's listed here. These are the bundles here. It's important to note that because um, when you get to the upgrade process, the ICE node filters out looking for this first part of this file name, and you'll see this later on in the demonstration. So if you download that, I recommend just keeping it as the same name, not changing the name. You can upgrade via GUI, which is what we're going to be doing today, graphical user interface. And you can also do it by, uh, via CLI. And there is a certain upgrade process um, for, in well, in my instance, we're using... Um, what we're using today is we're using the standalone node but if you've got a distributed deployment you'd normally start by or you would start by upgrading the um, secondary policy admin node followed by the monitoring nodes PSNs and last but not least you would then upgrade the um, primary uh, or the original primary um, policy admin node and this is so that if you encounter any errors you can just roll back it is also recommended that before you start this process, you do back up, if it is a live system, you do back up um, your ICE deployment before continuing. You can find more information about all this on the Cisco website underneath the current version upgrade guide, current version that you have. So without further ado, we will jump into the upgrade process. So before you actually upgrade or before you're actually allowed to upgrade, you need to um, create a repository where you can actually pull the downloaded upgrade file from. So to do that, you need to go to admin, maintenance, and then on the left hand side, repository. And we'll just go ahead and we'll add a repository here. So we'll just call mine Kelvin's underscore lab and I'm going to use FTP as you can see you've got loads of different uh, methods that you can use here I'm just simply using FTP today and I'm pulling this from this lab PC that I'm using so it's going to be 192.168.50.5 you can use a fully qualified domain name if you wish now for the path I'm just going to put that as root and username and password for my FTP server. I'm actually using an FTP server called Xlite FTP server. It's one of the first times I'm actually using this and it's it's not a bad server actually. Um so yeah my user is Kelvin and I think that's my password. We'll soon find out. So once you've done that you go ahead and submit that save your repository um, you need to ensure that you have your upgrade bundle downloaded. So mine is here in the um, on the desktop. 
and you may have to set a path or the root path on your FTP server if you're using an FTP server as well. So once we've done that, we then go across to upgrade. And then, as I say, I'm using a standalone deployment, so I've only got my single node here. If you are using a distributed deployment, and then you'll probably see all your um, node group, uh, all your nodes in the node group here. As you can see, I'm using version 2.3 currently, and the status is active standalone. So you might recall earlier, I mentioned how ICE filters based on the first part of the bundle that you download. Now we're going to see what I meant by this. So when you start the selecting your nodes to download, click on download, and then you can see here that it's filtered by ICE Upgrade Bundle, the first part of the file name. So you select your repository, mine is Kelvin's lab that I created and it will fetch the data from the server and as you can see there it's filtered and it's found the bundle that I want to use so I'll go ahead and select that confirm begin download and now you can see that the status it gives you a status of um, the percentage of the download which is good. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and I'll pause this video and I will resume once the download is completed. So we can see now that the download has reached 100%. It's still not quite finished yet. We'll know when it's finished because then we'll be able to continue. So we'll just wait until that finishes. So once the download is completed, we now have a status saying ready for upgrade. And for those that are wondering how long did that actually take, well it took less than just less than an hour just to do this standalone box. So that might be something to take into consideration. So we're gonna press continue. And now we get to the section where you actually perform the upgrade so because we've got a standalone we've only got one node to upgrade in the node group there's no more um, if you had a distributed deployment and um, then this would I believe it pre-selects the actual uh, nodes it will upgrade first and um, so as I said before it'll upgrade your secondary policy admin node first and then monitoring PSN then last but not least your primary admin node so we've selected one the new deployment upgrade yep so this is just basically saying that we're selecting that as a secret one sequence one that we'd like to upgrade so that's fine so that puts that now into the first sequence we've only got one as I say and as you can see here it gives an, a nice little feature actually um, and it does this for distributed deployments as well so every node that you have in your node group um, it'll tell you how long it'll take to actually do the upgrade um, you can also select this little checkbox here which says continue with the next node on the on upgrade fail, failure. Um, so this is this only works for the PSNs as it says. So if one fails then it'll continue on to the next one. We're not going to select that because we only have to stand alone anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and press upgrade. And you get a little confirmation box come up and it just says that you basically can't make any changes in the admin portal until the upgrade process is complete. And that's fine. So we'll do yes, proceed. And for those that are actually um, doing this on, a, on, on, on live um, nodes, you know, it's probably best that you plan some... Um, plan this out of hours you know just in case um, any downtime or uh, times where you don't need to make changes so now we saw that the upgrade was queued and now it's actually upgrading 
So again, I'm going to pause the uh, video and then we'll resume once the upgrade is complete. I just wanted to quickly show you guys that now that the upgrade is underway, um, I've been presented with a error on the user interface. Now this is because the um, all the services have shut down now. The the upgrades in in, in prog you know the the upgrades progressing. Um, so in order to follow the upgrade or at least see when it's been upgraded, um, we can do the following on the uh, CLI. So on the CLI, um, I'll just cancel it and show you. So what we can do is we can do a show version. And as we can see, I'm still operating on version 2.3 because the upgrade is not finished yet. And we could do show application status ice. And this will show you that the processes have uh, been shut down and they're not running which is why we've been presented with the error on screen. Let's give that a second to uh, load. And there we go. So you can see that the application server is not running. Uh, this, is, this allows us to connect to the uh, graphical user interface. And a very useful command is show login system ade forward slash capitals ade dot log now you can i recommend putting the command on the end tail because it'll, it'll take you to the bottom of the logs and it'll also um as the upgrade is uh, progressing it's going to output everything on screen for you to see so you could just wait there until it's finished and then resume um, by pressing control and uh, C to quit and then you could do issue your show version again or try to connect back to the graphical user interface but for now I'm going to leave this on um, the logs and I will resume the video once the upgrade is finished so we're back and the upgrade from 2.3 to 2.4 is now complete. We can verify this by going to administration, upgrade, and we can see that our box is now running 2.4. It was previously 2.3 and we can see that the status it says upgrade complete, which is what we like to see. And obviously I have access to the GUI again. We can also take a look on the CLI. So we just do a show version. We can also see that we're running version 2.4. And if we do a show application status ice. We'll just give this a moment to load. We should be able to see that our processes are running again. Every time you run a show application status at ICE, it does take some time sometimes. So we can see that our services are running, our application server is running, which is how we're able to access the GUI. So we can see now that the upgrade is complete. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. But until the next video, thank you for watching.